I thank you for the invitation to your camp. It's, um, well appointed, not too crowded, perfect for thinking. And I've been doing just that. It's about Wolbrin. We know he's been taken to Moonrise Towers, and we know I'm going to save him. The problem is this. A preponderance of evidence that I am a terrible adventurer. I'm not sure I should trust Wolbrin's fate to, well, me. Hmm, you've done so much already. I'm hesitant to prevail upon you again, but I can't risk recapture. I barely escaped last time. You'd do it then. You'd look for him. That's <clears throat> very decent of you. Thank you. There's something else you should know. Something I can no longer ignore. I know you've learned about the gnome's pursuit of rune powder, but do you know what it truly is? A telepath. Until very recently, I thought rune powder was a myth. A substance so powerful it could fell a city. A nation. The Iron Hand gnomes have proven the impossible. Rune powder is real, and they have it in their possession. Destruction. The only thing it's good for. But destruction of what? Well, I'm hoping Wilbrin will be able to tell us. I shouldn't have let him drift away. Shouldn't have let that lock get their claws into him. Now more than ever, I need to find him. We need to find him. He's the only one I might be able to speak to sensibly. I'd kiss you, but neither of us deserve that. Thank you. I haven't been there myself. The area around it is, well, cursed. Terrifyingly so. I did hear something interesting, though. There are shades that plague the path to the towers. Shades that fear not steel, but light. Dwergar, who mentioned it, sounded truly traumatized. It was almost amusing. left a trap out for us. Maybe I should stay crouched forever. <clears throat> Don't waste a step. I was trying to concentrate. Should never hurt. 
Sanne. What are you? A mold of some sort. Brilliant. Now to find the forge you belong to. Shouldn't have wished to live in more interesting times. Keep your blade close. Subtle steps. There's no time to waste. Still breathing, despite everything. Swift as my feet can carry me. Keep your distance, darling. No one stopped me yet. Platform's covered in rust. Must be older than bone dust.
nothing here. These boots have seen everything. Let's get this over with. 
both with. A dull moment. Right. Time to see what new horrors waiting for us. This must be the forge. What a feat of engineering it is.
things have stayed interesting.
whatever you are. Bedroll in my near future. Take you. Take you. Take you. Take you. No one back home will ever believe this. I wonder if the gods are watching me. and blades always show Let's get going. You're going up there. You've either got iron guts or one of those moon lanterns. One of Nier's magic lamps. You won't last without one. The death darks clogged the top land. Clear to moonrise towers. Only a moon lantern dispels it. Go on up if you fancy. 
Me? I'd sooner take a swim in the dark lake. A moment to indulge an old man. Elminster? The very same, Gale. And a fair bit miffed he is, too. Finding himself forced to expose his best pair of boots to so many miles of country road on your behalf. Originally, Shadowdale. Lately, the fanciest inns of Waterdeep. Meet Elminster Ormar, a good friend of mine, but rather more significantly, he's the most famed and respected wizard in the realms. Am I, indeed? Most famed and respected errand boy, more like. I was bid to spare neither time nor my own self to find you. She sent me, Gale. You know of whom I speak. But why? Out with it, Elminster. Please. Young man, has your sojourn away from Waterdeep washed away your decorum as well as your patience? Nigh a ten day I've gone without honest fare, worthy of the name, drank naught, but what the sky entitled my thirst. Why, some bread, cheese, and a cup of wine would appear unto me a feast. Surely you will begrudge me a mite of rest and repast before I get, get out with it. And a great kindness that would be. See, Gail? Even in these barren parts, the art of hospitality begets inspired new works. If only one keeps up the practice. Oh, for the love of... Uh, well, this way then. Hmm. To your camp. Oh, don't dawdle now, lad. You're the one who's in such a frightful hurry. Oh, nigh on 13 centuries old and he still thinks with his stomach. We'd best follow and see if he's more disposed to speak plainly once it's stopped its grumbling. A wise choice. Better to indulge your curiosity than Elminster's appetite. Doesn't do to parlay on an empty stomach, you know. Makes one's words frivolous when they should be grave. Plenty to digest, after all. 
good deal to stew over, if you will. Words ladled with import should be savoured so as to better absorb their meaning. Wouldn't you agree? Alminster. Uh, right. Um, you see, I, um, well, that is to say, Gail, my boy, I've come to address a most pressing matter. I'll speak as plainly as I can, forswearing the accustomed frills that decorate my speech. I'm here on behalf of Mistra. The message and the charge I bring you are hers. Oh, Mistra's delicate feet are ill-suited for the hardships of the road. You know where you went wrong, Gail. No, we needn't dwell on that here and now. But even so, you're to be given a chance of redemption. Mistra will consider forgiveness. She would consider what she considers to be forgiveness. Mistra is aware of the misadventures that have befallen you both. She knows of your strife with the absolute, that most insidious of evils. They choose the instruments of their will with great precision. Sometimes the single drops we think we are do not realize what waves we are building up to be. Do not discount yourself, and by the same token, do not discount your enemy. You must know that the absolute is more dangerous than you can possibly conceive. It threatens all who live, even those who are undying. It threatens the gods, the weave, the very fabric of the universe itself. That is why I have come here to charge you, Gale, with its destruction. It is Mistress' belief that only you can. The orb. Precisely. Mistra has granted me the power to stop the clock, as it were, on the orb's rush to overpower you. Instead, you will be able to unleash its lethal combustion at will. Interesting. This could be help or hindrance. We shall have to see. You must find the heart of the Absolute, whatever that may be, and use yourself as the um, catalyst that will burn it from this world. No, indeed. And I think she trusts me too. It brings me no pleasure saying this, my friend. But such is Mistra's will. Yours must be the sacrifice that will undo the absolute. And for your sacrifice, you will be redeemed. Such is Mistra's promise. With that, I've said my sorry piece. I need only bestow unto thee the charm I was bid. It is done. 
Both charge and charm have been committed into your care. To you, I commit into care Gale himself. I count on you to shepherd him well on this strangest of journeys. Or some other fortune altogether. Like moons make swell and wane the nescient seas, so too the skies children gods ordain the tidal fates of mortal days. And yet, an ocean born in lonely hours, come ebb, come flow, come all that is beyond the breadth of our dominion. Be a moon unto yourself. Even the waves of fate can break upon the shores of will. Farewell, my friend. Farewell, Elminster. I'm glad she chose you. with Elminster is never less than memorable. I'd have hoped to introduce you to him in less dire circumstances. But those are hard to come by these days. It's not a demand he wanted to make of me. As mistress chosen, he had no choice but to deliver her message. However much it pained him to do so, for Mistra to have sent him, the severity of her bidding could not be clearer or weigh more heavily on me. Time seems so infinite when you're young. A month is an age. A year is a lifetime. It is a strange feeling to realize how little of it one might have left. We offer the clearest solution to our problem. All I have to do is find the right place and time, close my eyes, and let go. Then the slate will be clean. Wrongs will be righted, the absolute will be gone, and I along with it. I've no doubt she has the power to do so, but as for the permission, Ao would not look kindly on her meddling in mortal affairs. Divine intervention has a tendency to make things worse, not better. As for Elminster, he saved the realms more times than legend can recount. But to take on a god is no easy feat, even for him. My orb is the best chance we have. And only I can wield it. Possibly the most spectacular one ever conceived. But essentially, yes, I'm living on borrowed time in more ways than one. Perhaps, perhaps this is how it must be. That remains ahead of us for now. The heart of the absolute must be discovered before I can stop its beating. Let's save such certainty for the moment such a decision is upon us. We may feel differently once we know what we're truly up against.